The Mayor and City Council welcome you to the Peoria City Council meeting. As a courtesy to others, please silence all phones. If you would like to address an issue that is on the agenda, or if you would like to speak to the Council regarding a non-agenda item, please complete a speaker request form, which can be found in the front lobby of the Peoria City Council Chambers or in the tray to the left of the speaker's podium. Please place the completed speaker request form in the second tray to the left of the speaker's podium labeled Request to Speak. All speakers will have three minutes to complete their comments. A countdown clock is easily visible on the left side of the wall behind the City Council dais. Only items listed on the agenda may be addressed by the Council. Since items presented as part of a speaker's request have not been listed on the agenda and due to the requirements of open meeting laws, the Council will be unable to respond to items presented as part of the speaker's request. However, please be aware that your comments will be noted. The speaker's name will be called to speak at the appropriate time in the order that the forms were received. Thank you for your interest and participation in the Peoria City Council meeting. Peoria City Council meeting will now come to order. Please rise for a moment of quiet reflection and the Pledge of Allegiance read by Councilmember Finn. Clerk will please call the roll. Mayor Carlett? Here. And Vice Mayor Edwards? Here. Councilmember Patena? Here. Councilmember Binsbacher? Here. Councilmember Finn? Here. Councilmember Hunt? Here. And Councilmember Leone? Here. Good evening and welcome to the Peoria City Council meeting of March 7th, 2017. We will now proceed to the consent agenda. Council, are there any items to be removed from consent? Seeing none, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. And the consent agenda passed unanimously. The next item on the agenda is call to the public for non-agenda items. Uh, if you wish to address the city council, please fill out a speaker request form and place it in the bin next to the speaker's podium. I do have one request to speak, and it is from Cassidy Gabrost. Cassidy, please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes. Cassidy Gatris, 8940 West Olive Avenue, Unit Number 6, Peoria, Arizona, 85345. Good evening, Mayor Kathy Carlett, members of the council, and members in the community. As a member of the City of Peoria's Youth Advisory Board, I would like to say thank you to Councilman Carlo Rocky Leone and his assistant, Mrs. Karen Halstead. Councilman Leone gave the Youth Advisory Board a wonderful opportunity to promote our board at his event on February 28, 2017, at the Days Hotel. Councilman Leone spoke highly about the City of Peoria's Youth Advisory Board program. He allowed a designated table to set up applications for our program. Also, thank you for the donuts. Our members of the board were very grateful and appreciative. On February 28th, 2017, the Youth Advisory Board had a keynote speaker, Ms. Lori Deaver, from the General Plan Advisory Committee, and special guests who were in attendance, including Vice Mayor Councilman John Edwards. Thank you for taking the time out of your schedules to come and speak to our board. Mrs. Lori Deaver's presentation was exciting to hear and see what the outlook of the city of Peoria would be 30 years from now. The city of Peoria is growing and is constantly evolving, which means more, which means more economic growth to our communities and increase in the population. I ask every citizen in the community to please keep in mind on funding for our schools. With newer homes means more families with children. As a former student of Cottonball Elementary School, I wanted to pay it forward and give back to a school where my journey began as a Youth Advisory Board member. Thank you to Principal Dave Snyder, Vice Principal Dr. Carmen Marsden, and eighth grade teacher Ms. Melissa Bacincelli. They allowed me to speak to the students on March 6, 2017, and gave a presentation to the City of Peoria's Youth Advisory Board program. The students were inquisitive and intrigued about our program. 
Cottonball Elementary School is holding a fundraiser on March 16th, 2017 at Chipotle from 4 to 8 p.m. at Westgate in Glendale. Help support a school for a good cause. A special thank you to Mr. George Colebrook for helping shine light on our City of Peoria's Youth Advisory Board program at Cottonball Elementary School. Also for allowing the Youth Advisory Board to do a program or to do a promo at Channel 11 to promote our board on March 2nd, 2017. In closing, I want to thank Mayor Kathy Carlett, members in the council, and Mr. George Colebrook for giving the Youth Advisory Board a fantastic opportunity to attend the National League of Cities Congressional Conference in Washington, D.C. We look forward to an enriched knowledge of how our government operates in different cities on a larger scale and attain tremendous amounts of educational history to bring back to the city of Peoria. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. <clears throat> I've got one more request to speak from Monica Seja Martinez. Good evening, and I apologize for the laptop. I realize that one note is very efficient. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Monica Seja Martinez, 7301 West Wind Rose Drive, Peoria, Arizona, 85381. Good evening, council members, guests, audience. Um, first, I wanted to say thank you, uh, council member Vicki Hunt, for the invite uh, for the Heart for the City event. I had an opportunity to meet a lot of our council members and other community members. It's a great honor to continue to working on partnerships as we discussed, in the, and hopefully we can continue those going forward. Uh, tonight, I have come to invite all of you, and the reason why I am here is I received an email today from our district office. We have created a boundary committee. Uh, I am not part of that process. Our district administration is and they have elected community members that represent north of bell about the situation that's going on with our district now most recently the bond did not pass so we're coming up with solutions that are overcrowding in our schools the information has not been presented to the governing board but they are your constituents and, and citizens that live within your boundaries and i clearly understand that the precincts that you are discussing in regards to boundaries are different from the boundaries that we make decisions on. However, the citizens are still the same within those elected boundaries. So I invite you. It is Tuesday, March 28th, 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. And there are students from the Southern who are in variances that attend our Northern schools. And there are a lot of Northern schools that are in variances to other parts of the district. So I think it would be relevant information. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We appreciate the information. All right. Um, we will now move on to reports from City Manager, Mr. Swenson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Carlin. Uh, two uh, reports this evening. And the first is uh, by our Planning Community Development Director, Chris Hawkes, and he'll give an update on the Old Town Block strategy. Chris? Okay, good evening, Mayor Council. At our, uh, at our last council meeting, I gave an update on uh, another initiative we're working on, the general plan update. Um, tonight, I'm going to give you an update on a uh, second initiative that's running simultaneously, and that's what we're calling the Old Town Block Strategy. Now, the, the uh, namesake strategy is important because um, we're not talking about an additional plan for Old Town. What we're talking about are two very specific deliverables that I'll talk about as I uh, identify what the scope is of this project. Um, in terms of Old Town redevelopment, um, as you know, in recent years, the city has embarked on a more uh, purposeful path in trying to seed redevelopment in our Old Town. So essentially to restore vitality in an area that once had was the hub of activity in the city, um, is once the commercial hub of the city, we're now looking at efforts to, uh, that have included acquisition or land banking of properties that would enable the city to directly intervene into the market. So that's a, that's a different change than we've seen in past years. Um, so essentially what that does is that allows the city to control the destiny, uh, create shovel-ready sites, and position or seed the old town area for redevelopment. So it puts us in a stronger position to do that. So in support of this effort, last May, you may recall, the city council um, authorized funding to purchase certain properties in the block, and all the, the block essentially around 83rd in, in Washington. It included funded for not only the purchase of properties, but uh, property abatement, beautification, or environmental clearance, so whatever the circumstance uh, required of that. The city also authorized and appropriated funding to engage a consultant to identify real-world redevelopment scenarios for the block and to identify branding, signage, and placemaking concepts that will help provide uh, a distinction for Old Town, similar to what we've done in, in PD3 area. 
So that's what I'll talk about tonight. One thing to, uh, to note is that um, we have an internal working group comprised of, as you can see on the uh, screen here, of a number of individuals that uh, we've been meeting you know, over the last couple of years just as an effort to try to coordinate all the various activities that are occurring in and around Old Town. So uh, this group will serve as our, uh, as our steering group, if you will, on, on technical matters as we proceed through the block strategy, but I wanted to point out some of those names that are, that are part of that working group. Okay, so I thought before I talk about the, uh, the two elements or the two base components of the block strategy, I thought it's important to kind of step back a second and uh, view the block strategy in context with all the various Old Town activities that have occurred over, over time. Um, so when we think about what is the Old Town strategy, um, I think it's important, at least for people like me that are, that are visual, that like to, to kind of put it in three buckets to understand how all these actions work together. And uh, it's all informed by a common vision. And that vision was provided by the Old Town Revitalization Plan that was adopted in 2009. But it's a series of activities that occur simultaneously over time with the objective to prepare the area for redevelopment, to, to position the area uh, and provide uh, better, uh, better visibility and better attractiveness in the area. So it's really three buckets, and three buckets I'll talk about. The first one being business attraction. And, and essentially what that is is for any Old Town to work, to, to provide vitality, to provide interest, you need a magnet user. You need a reason to come to Old Town. You need a, a hub of activity. And so um, that's a continuing effort uh, with our economic development strategies. Also, the notion of key opportunity sites uh, being that there are certain strategic sites in and around Old Town that provide that ability to hopefully someday provide that magnet user to, to uh, uh, reassert Old Town. So also other strategies that follow within that bucket, uh, of course, parcel assemblage, uh, market uh, intervention, um, adaptive reuse. That's essentially a term um, that was uh, probably best demonstrated by the Lucidity Distillery, where we have a, an old building that was, we were able to uh, restore into its former form as the city's first fire station, but now operates as a distillery. So a wonderful example there. Uh, the second bucket I'll talk about is what we'll call visibility and image, and that's essentially trying to um, improve the perceptions of Old Town. So that could include all kinds of act, act, uh, activities that uh, we might reduce blight, might improve some of the visual conditions that we see in and around the Old Town area. As you know, uh, regardless of what the statistics are on safety, sometimes uh, these types of environments have the effect of uh, impacting perceptions about safety in an area. So it's important to improve that, that visual landscape there. And also to um, better position the area as a place for uh, citizens to live, uh, to visit, and for uh, the private sector to invest in the area. Some of the actions that we've been involved in over the years is there's been, uh, as you know, over the last 10 years, a significant amount of public investment that has, that has occurred in the area. Everything from, uh, you know, just to name a few, the community center, Osuna Park renovation, 84th Avenue streetscape, uh, the Centennial Plaza. So there's been a number of, of public projects that have helped, uh, helped improve the, the, uh, the look of that area. There's also a um, ramped up code enforcement. Uh, you had a study session at your last uh, council meeting about some of those efforts to try to improve that visual landscape and, and, and uh, abate some structures that are particularly uh, in, a, in a dangerous condition to the, to the citizens. Also, um, we've tried to focus on improving uh, the number of uh, uh, city events that occur in and around downtown, in Old Town Peoria rather, to really improve the, uh, the um, visibility of it, and that happens through projects and also promote historic awareness. And then the last thing I'll talk about, probably the least sexy of all of them, but nonetheless important, and that's to improve the regulatory landscape. That's so if, if uh, we have a developer interest in Old Town, then they have an environment that, that is smooth and it's, it's clear and, and how they can uh, develop in the area. So there's been a number of projects, Russia, a number of efforts that have been uh, approved over the years, including the Old Town Revitalization Plan, the uh, entertainment district that we adopted in 2012 that enabled uh, certain types of um, uh, liquor license uses, also the multimodal transportation plan that provided emphasis for a potential future park and ride and uh, transit center uh, along Grand Avenue. Um, there's some actions that are in progress right now that I would put in this bucket, and that includes things like the sign code. We've talked about the sign code that we're in the process of updating right now that will have an impact in Old Town. Also, uh, we're in progress updating uh, the Old Town Mixed Use Zoning District. So it's a zoning district that applies to areas around the Old Town core. And also I'll note the uh, presentation that uh, Mr. Kent provided uh, a few meetings ago regarding the transit study, the park and ride 
uh, activities around that. So all these things together are part of an overall strategy to try to improve the um, position of Old Town, if you will. So now what I'll do is talk about the Old Town block strategy. Um, there are two base components. I'll talk about each one in a little more detail, but essentially what we're calling component one, uh, that's a market and technical assessment. The level of geography, if you look at this screen on your right, it's the, the small little square in white. It's an uh, area bounded by Washington Street to the north, Jefferson to the south, 83rd Avenue to the east, and 83rd Drive to the west. So it's the part of the block where the city has uh, purchased a few of those uh, properties. What the intent here is to um, look at the market data and to identify highest and best use for properties that are not only in uh, city ownership, but throughout the block as well, and then potentially areas beyond that. But to provide real-world scenarios, and that's what the interest here is, what will the market provide? What will the market bear? Uh, bear? What, is, uh, what is possible in Old Town? And if, if the market happens to be um, not quite uh, mature to our expectations, then what might be an interim option for it until the market matures to a point? So it's an objective that will enable the city to uh, make decisions about the property it controls and, and uh, future disposition. Also, part of that uh, assessment will be to um, look at our various codes and ordinances that uh, impact uh, development and redevelopment in the area and to provide recommendations and, as to how we can uh, perhaps remove barriers to entry to improve the, uh, the viability of, of new development in the area. So that's essentially what that's going to be. Component two is a little different, and that's branding and placemaking. So that's the element of where we're trying to provide a little distinctiveness to Old Town. And so the level of geography is different. It's a wider area. It's the area in red and essentially generally bounded by Grand Avenue to the east, Peoria to the north, uh, Monroe to the south, and 85th to the west. It's a, it's a uh, general boundary. It's, it's certainly uh, malleable. But again, as I mentioned, it's, it's brand and identity creation. And a, a portion of that that I'll talk about is to um, identify elements that will help reinforce the brand. And I'll, I'll speak to what some of those elements might be that, uh, uh, for those recommendations. Um, this graphic focuses on the block or component one. A number of activities have, have happened over the last uh, couple of years. Of course, starting to the far right, Lucidity Distilling, the adaptive reuse of the uh, former fire station. Uh, to the, the property to the west is under city ownership. Uh, that was where the former fire admin building was that was uh, raised last summer. Uh, Lucidity Distilling has an option on that property. Going to the uh, far left on the bottom, the uh, former church, those three properties were acquired last summer and raised. And then the Cozars property on the, uh, along Jefferson and 83rd, uh, the city is uh, performing feasibility right now, but we did recently exercise the option and acquire the property. So those are some of the activities that have occurred around the block. As I mentioned, what this component will do is to, uh, an attempt to identify what the highest and best use will be. Um, so to provide the city with, with uh, redevelopment options. Again, if it's just the properties that the city controls or you know, the future possibility if there's other properties. So provide us what might be some redevelopment scenarios. Again, what might be some interim options for the city to consider. And then the technical recommendations that I talked about. So the two outcomes, the two deliverables that we'll get is recommendations for property disposition. That will be um, a number of options that we'll be able to present to city council. And then recommendations for code changes to try to improve the, um, the landscape, the regulatory landscape for Old Town. And then the second component, uh, as you recall, this is the larger Old Town area. This is branding and marketing. And so this is a, an effort to, um, to understand and to, uh, uh, to identify a, a brand for Old Town and a strategy that we can, how we can deploy that brand through the various means, whether it's signage, monumentation, street furniture, which is everything from benches to uh, pav pavement materials, landscaping. How can we infuse art into the old town? So it's all those elements to kind of reinforce it as a special place. And so the outcomes here will be uh, that deployment strategy that I mentioned, but also what I'm, what I'm calling a roster, but essentially is I'm looking for the consultant to identify all these specific elements around the core. What, what uh, placemaking elements are we talking about? Where will they be? Um, how many are we looking about? And what might be a relative cost? That way we can, we can attempt to try to uh, program those in, in future budget cycles. But that's going to be the outcome for uh, component two. So as you can see, two very specific deliverables. The uh, consultant team that was selected was uh, Michael, Baker, excuse me, Michael Baker International. They're a, um, a uh, planning and engineering firm with offices actually throughout the world, um, but they have a local Phoenix office that we're working with on this project. 
Uh, some of the sub-consultants, uh, ESI Corp, Judy Scalise, she'll be providing the economic uh, development analytics. We've worked with Judy in the past. Um, she has you know, lots of experience, very deep experience in, in economic studies. And then the other sub would be uh, Lonnie Lott from LL Consulting. And so, uh, as you can see, deep experience too. She will be specifically involved in the, uh, in the um, branding and marketing effort. Um, so we'll be working with her on, on that. In your packet, uh, we've provided a, a schedule, a general schedule. I thought I would break it down into some milestones. As you can see, the project is pretty sequential. We're going to focus on component one first. That's really the technical analysis to understand what it is uh, the block can bear. Um, so as you can see, we finalized the contract and the scope last month. Um, over the next couple months, we're going to be working on the, the analytics, the market analysis. Uh, there will be a stakeholder workshop uh, sometime around the, the month of April. Uh, to, to identify those findings, and then those uh, recommendations will be re reported to the uh, Planning Commission and the Council probably sometime before summer this year. And then after that, the uh, objective is to start the second component. So after we've understand the position of, of, of Old Town, how do we identify the marketing strategy? So we'll start that in late summer. Um, it'll be uh, done through a series of focus groups, uh, various means of outreach. Uh, there'll be community workshops that will be held as well. We um, expect to identify a draft brand or identity somewhere around fall 2017 with the um, objective to bring the council the final recommendations near the end of the year for component two. And so both component one and two, those will encompass the overall block strategy. So with that, I'll take any questions you might have. Thank you. Great presentation. Council Member Hunt, any questions? Well, I just want to say good job, and Chris and Andy and Susan especially, and if I'm misnaming someone, the uh, people that you've worked with on this, I know it has not been a single person. It's been a real collaborative effort, and you've listened to my think tank people and taken their input. Um, I'm just so happy to see a plan in black and white or blue and black and white, whatever this is, <laughs> Uh, and it's, it's somewhat malleable, I, I realize that, but it's so good to, to know that you have the, uh, the uh, company hired, because that's, that's a big deal. And <coughs> I just think we're on such the right path for actually, I know I have felt this way before, but I really feel this time we are on the path to see something accomplished in Old Town. And would I like it to be yesterday? Of course. But it, I like that end of 2017. And we all know that's just around the corner. There's going to be summer and then school starts and then it's going to be Christmas. And that's end of 2017. So I, I just couldn't be happier. And we'll be working in between with all these people, the stakeholders as well as the, uh, the folks employed to, that, that actually know a lot about what they're doing that'll have some suggestions and we're going to get this thing beat we're going to get this old town whipped into shape uh or as my dad used to say we'll do it or we'll know the reason why uh so i just think that we're gonna we're gonna do it i i feel very very positive about it so thank you again susan andy chris and anybody else who's been involved in this i don't really have questions at this point i've kind of been down this before and I just love it. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. <coughs> Thank you, Chris. The last item I have is uh, a feature that we have at uh, the first meeting of each month, and that's uh, upcoming events in the month, and it's in a video. Students from Peoria Unified School District will exhibit their artwork, perform dance and theater acts, and play music on stages throughout the day at the Peoria Arts and Cultural Festival. The event, provided by Peoria and the Peoria Unified School District, will be held Saturday, April 1st, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. throughout Old Town Peoria. The whole family will enjoy candy hunts for children, meeting Mr. and Mrs. Bunny, inflatables, games, make and take crafts, a petting zoo, pony rides, and more at the 41st anniversary of the Dolly Sanchez Memorial Easter Egg Hunt on Saturday, April 15th from 8 a.m. to noon at the Peoria Sports Complex. 
Admission and parking are free when you bring a donation of canned food. Food and beverages will be available for purchase. For more information on any of these great events, call 623-773-7137 or visit www.peoriaaz.gov slash special events. And of course, there's a lot more baseball left this month. Of course. And that's all I have. All right. Thank you. We will now move on to reports from the City Council, and we will start with Council Member Patena. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, this past Saturday I had the opportunity to go to a ribbon-cutting event, uh, which was dedicating the public art murals uh, over at Happy Valley uh, Road. Um, in conjunction with that was um, Bravo Peoria, uh, an event where the library gives away books and CDs for kids and, and adults. Um, they have a reptile and balloon show. Uh, bouncy houses, face painting, all types of things. And once again, this is another free event uh, by the City of Pure. There was a ton of people at the library, and I know they all had a good time, and they had some really great deals uh, on books. Um, this coming Saturday, I have a park fest at the, in the Ironwood District, and it's going to be at Calbrisa Park, 8957 West Tumblewood Drive. And this... Uh, Park Fest, we're going to be featuring uh, free hot dogs and hamburgers, uh, free soda. There will also be a climbing wall, face painting, tattoos, not the real kind. Um, and uh, it should be a, a, a lot of fun. We're giving away uh, six bikes to kids. And, uh, again, this is a free event. Uh, it's great to have them in the community. And the Park Fests are huge successes uh, in this city. And then last week uh, and the week before, uh, Vice Mayor Edwards, Councilmember Hunt, and myself had the opportunity to, to uh, listen to over 70 nonprofits uh, come to us for um, to be funded. The uh, city's been doing this now uh, almost uh, 25 years, and we give away pretty close uh, with our um, CDBG money and our general fund money, we give away typically uh, almost a million dollars to these uh, not-for-profits. And um, we fund organizations that deal with the homeless, with domestic violence, human trafficking, YMCA, Boys and Girls Club, Benavia. And they all come to us uh, because federal funding, as you know, is being cut all the time. And they need our money to uh, continue the programming. Um, like I said, we saw over 70 agencies, and we typically try to fund those agencies that we know are going to be helping as many Peorians as they can because, sadly, Peorians have some of the issues, the very issues that I just talked about. Uh, and that's, uh, that's one of the criteria that we use. And so these, this uh, giving money to these not-for-profits really does help the citizens of Peoria. And every uh, year we see new uh, organizations coming to us, which is exactly what we want to see. So it was a great event, and... Uh, Happy to have all those come before us. That's all I have, Ann. Thank you. Councilmember Binsbacher. Thank you, Mayor. Well, this is definitely a, an active uh, season for events, so <laughs> I am just going to highlight a few. Uh, I had an opportunity to attend the uh, Boards and Commissions Appreciation Dinner at Arizona Broadway Theater, which was a fantastic event, and I want to thank staff for another ex successful event and again um, express gratitude and thanks to all of our volunteers because we certainly couldn't do what we do as a city without the network of volunteers that we have putting in their time and sharing their talents and resources and it's just really remarkable. Um, the, I had the honor of being able to judge the uh, PUSD patriotic speech contest and um, I went into that thinking, oh, how fun. I'm going to watch these kids deliver these speeches. It was one of the most uh, stressful experiences <laughs> uh, listening to these kids. Um, the, the caliber of, 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 of kids and the speeches from the content and the delivery, it was unbelievable. But, again, I, I, I felt so proud to see what uh, – 
is being produced in, in Peoria, and if our future is in their hands, we have a lot to look forward to. We really do. That was just a fantastic experience. Um, Sidewinder Little League opening day ceremonies was this past Saturday. Again, every year it gets bigger and better. I was so happy to see community services there uh, talking about the park and sharing what's up and coming, and people were so interested and engaged. The numbers just keep growing and growing, and uh, it was just a fantastic community event. Uh, PD was there, and of course, Chief Minter was clearly a community favorite. Um, and finally today, Food for Kids, which is an event that happens in the Mesquite District, Food for Kids uh, at Trilogy at Vistancia. Unbelievable what happened today. Uh, the mayor was there, somewhere between two and 300 volunteers coming together. We had um, Peoria firefighters were there, uh, you know, replenishing the, the ingredients for packaging these meals. It is an effort that goes on all day. They package somewhere around 140,000 meals. Half of those meals stay local, and the other half go to other parts of the world where kids are hungry. And it was just amazing. And again, I was so proud to see all of the community come together the way they did. Really, the room was beyond capacity, and they had to rotate volunteers in and out. Um, and it was just unbelievable what happened. So a lot of good things happening in Peoria. And again, lots of events, lots going on. But thank you to staff, public safety, for being everywhere all the time. Because um, I, I know it's a lot to cover. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Vice Mayor Edwards? Uh, nothing this evening, Mayor. Councilmember Finn? A little caught off guard by that one there. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't think I was going to. Wow. Wow. Um, so a couple things. I also attended the Board and uh, Commission's recognition event, which was, uh, I thought it was fabulous. And my thanks go out to all of the volunteers as well. Um, we really wouldn't be able to do the things that we do without those volunteers. And um, I also want to uh, thank Mr. Bill Patina for being the chair of the boards and commissions for the past two years. Bill has uh, handed that over to me, thank you Bill, um, to be the chair moving forward. So I just wanted to tell you, you did a fabulous job um, over the past two years and if I had it my way, you still would have been the chair, but um, you were pretty clear on, uh, <laughs> you need a little bit of a break. So you did a fabulous job over the past two years and I can't thank you enough for what you did. Um, also attended Neighborhood Pride. I love these things. This one was absolutely over the top amazing in my opinion. Um, there were people everywhere. Pure Unified had uh, groups out there. Um, Pure Wrestling comes to mind immediately out there helping. We had uh, groups from other, um, other districts that were out helping as well. Um, but the really cool thing for me was there were literally tables set up in all of the driveways with um, really healthy food like Dunkin' Donuts and um, all sorts of just, it was just amazing. The whole neighborhood just came together. People that weren't even having work done on their house were out and talking to neighbors and um, it's just a fabulous event. I can't thank the city enough for, um, for putting that together. The, um, the difference in what happens in those six to seven hours is just absolutely phenomenal. So um, that was awesome for me to get to, to go witness that um, on Saturday morning early on Saturday morning and cold. Um, also got to go to the ribbon, ribbon cutting ceremony for the Doggy District on Thunderbird. Um, it was interesting. I had never been inside of one of those. I think I'm giving the dogs a treat when I put a little, you know, leftover steak or something in the bowls. This place is over the top ridiculous. So they've got their own suites with beds and TVs going and it's really a cool, cool place. Um, so if you have an opportunity, stop by if you have pets and you want to just, you know, do something cool for them. They actually have a pool for them. They have like pool parties and birthday parties for the dogs. Um, it was kind of neat. Uh, and also the uh, charity opening, opening day at the ballpark was, was amazing. Um, so if you get an opportunity, everybody out there listening, uh, get out there and pick, uh, pick up a ball game while the weather is still beautiful and nice. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Council Member Hunt. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, too, am a little surprised that John is silent tonight. Um, must be something in the air. Um, I think the word you've heard the most from us up here tonight is volunteer. Almost everyone has said something about some group of volunteers. 
and I don't think it can be said often enough that our city, maybe any city, but I don't know about any city, I know about our city, we really run on volunteers. If we could calculate even a minimum wage for the amount of hours that our volunteers put in, it would, it would just be phenomenal. It would be like the national debt getting paid, you know. It would be incalculable. Uh, and I think every one of our directors and all, you depend to a certain extent on volunteers. I know the police have volunteers. Uh, fire has volunteers. We all do. And part of my real joy in this seat that I occupy is what Bill referred to, and that is the day that we hear, two days actually, long days, like nine-hour days, that we hear not-for-profits uh, pitching their program to us in the hopes of receiving some money to help them run their programs. And while some of them do have directors and have some paid um, people on their staff, most of what they do is run by volunteers. And it's everything from food pantries I, I can't even tell you how many food pantries we have. There is no reason for anyone in our city or even the West Valley to go hungry. We have food agencies that feed kids uh, in addition to the Peoria School District. Uh, they feed kids on Saturdays and Sundays. They send lunches home with them. We have uh, churches that have every day. They don't ask for anything. They don't ask your uh, you know, what, to see a driver's license or anything else. If you want food, they give it to you. Um, just amazing. We have them for medical needs. We have them for transporting our elderly. We have uh, volunteer agencies that just help you connect. If you don't know who to call for something, there's a number you call to find out who to call. Just amazing organizations. Um, and then I also attended the dinner for our volunteers, our city volunteers. And thank you so much, Rhonda, Linda, your department, because you put this together every year. Your department runs the organization of this team selecting the volunteer positions. And there is no reason for anyone in this city to sit home and say, I'm bored. I just don't have any... I, I just, this television is getting so boring, or I really don't like the way this city is being run. Get out of your chair, volunteer somewhere for something. It might be in your school. It might be one of our boards and commissions. And Cassidy, I just appreciate so much. You, you know, I spent my life in high school. I never could quite graduate. So I think I liked it so much that I decided to spend my life there. So I really love getting kids involved. And you are going to be a great citizen your whole life. You will be. And, and thank you for what you do. Um, youth advisory. We need kids to apply for the youth advisory board. Uh, don't, and don't think that you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You, you don't have uh, you know, all the excuses that you might use. No, you do. And we need you. So apply. Oh, let's see. What else do I have? Theater works. Oh, for you guys with little kids, you want to go over and see the Popper Princess. Um, it's, a, it, it's only an hour long. It's in the Macmillan Black Box Theater, so it's not a huge stage production. But it's just precious. It's really wonderful. It's a story probably for two-year-olds up through, I don't know, I had a granddaughter go and she's 12. And I have a high school granddaughter who is going to go with her friends to see it. It's just for all ages, and anything that is done at Theater Works is wonderful. And then I met some gentlemen today from Trilogy. And uh, Bridget, I don't know the name of that theater group. Do you know it? Is it the Trilogy Players? Trilogy Players. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, the Trilogy Players, and they're going to be there tomorrow night at Theater Works. They are taking their show on the road and coming down here. And it's a generational play. It shows a family going through all the different stages of life. And I met some of those players today, and I'm certainly going to do my best to get over there and support them. I understand that they're very good. A lot of them have, have moved to Trilogy, but they've been somewhere else in the United States, and, uh, and they've been players there. I think that's all I have. Maybe that was enough. Thank you. Councilmember Leone. 
Maybe we can get out of here by 8.30 so I can go see NCIS at 8 o'clock, rather. A couple of things I'd like to mention about the Voice of Commission Appreciation Event. I want to thank all the volunteers, like we've been talking about, and uh, I want to congratulate the people who uh, uh, did their, did their uh, four years or eight years on the Voice of Commission, and I want to congratulate the ones who just came in on the Voice of Commission because the Voice of Commission does a lot of work for the city, and they, they work pretty hard, and they're working almost every day trying to figure out how they can help the city council. <coughs> Opening day at the ballpark for the charity game, it was great. Uh, there was a lot of uh, things going on for the kids and the families. And if you haven't been there with all the new equipment, I think you should go down there and see it. It's just a great game. If you haven't gone to the baseball games yet, uh, you should go down there and, and watch some of the games. On a grand manor, manor community meeting, <clears throat> it's a new, about 80 brand new homes they just sold out, and we had a meeting there with all of the people, and about 40 people showed up, which you'll probably never see them again, and uh, they just organized a new home association board. So I want to wish them lots of luck and, and keep coming to the, to the home association meetings because they have important. On March the 14th, I went to Bravo, Peoria, and, you know, it's the first time I've went, because every time they have it, I'm in D.C. But it won't be in D.C. until Saturday, so I decided to go to it. It was just great, great for the kids. They had a lot of things going on for the families also. Uh, <coughs> paint facing, theater works, balloon artists, kids' crafts. It was just great, and if you haven't gone... I'd advise you to go. But this is the first one I went to, and I just want to say that uh, it was just great. Whoever put these events on, they do a great job. <clears throat> great job. Just one other thing at Scotland Yard Park on April the 8th, we're going to have uh, an event there. It's a little early to mention it, but just to put in your calendar, we're going to have hot dogs, soda, and cookies and popcorn at this event, and it's going to be a lot of fun for the families. It's going to be just great. God bless each and every one of you, and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you. And um, in addition to all of those things, I think I went to most of those too, uh, I would just like to say that a lot of your elected representatives sitting on this dais here, are going to be in Washington, D.C. next week for the National League of Cities. So if you, members of the public who elected these people, wish them to say anything for you to your representatives in Congress, please let them know. <coughs> you can email them. You can give them a call. You can do anything. Just remember that they represent you, and if you'd like to pass on a message, they're here for you. Thank you. And with that, we are adjourned.